Um, my name is John Urich. Uh, I work at Iowa State University. Uh, I help organize the uh, Central Iowa Drupal Users Group, uh, which kind of started the whole Drupal Corn thing. Uh, so I've been a camp organizer for since 2012. Yeah. Uh, I kind of ducked back a little bit this year because I just had a uh, a kid come along uh, <laughs> a few months ago. So. I didn't really want to be busy with organizing a camp. Um, so instead, I'm just I'm doing a presentation here. Um, so easily embed videos with video embed field. So you get a client that comes up to you and says, I just want to put video on my site. That's you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but why is this so hard? I mean, I can put a picture in so easy. I can put in some text or but what what's so hard about video? Well, it's not just one problem. It's a lot of problems. With videos, you got to figure out encoding. I mean, first of all, where is your video coming from? Is it from your DV cam? Is it MP4? Is it WMV? Is it MOV? How are you going to get that encoded into the right thing so that it works on the web for everybody. Uh, and then there's players, you know, the video tag. That's a really great idea, but in practice it doesn't always work because, you know, Firefox only supports these codecs and Chrome only supports these codecs. And ooh, now I have to, like, figure out what browser is running and serve the right kind of video. Oh, that's hard. Um, and there's also iframe security. You don't necessarily want to give your users access to put anything into your site. Uh, if they, you know, get like an email say, "Hey, put this code in your site," and it's actually a phishing scam, like, mm, you gotta be careful about that. Um, and then there's accessibility. If you're running a, you know, at a university, ooh, don't don't. You gotta make sure you know blind people or deaf people can be able to get the information out of the video, which is really hard depending on the type of video you're doing. So how, how do you accommodate that? And sometimes it, that's, that could be really hard or it could be a little easier if we know that we're going to expect this sort of stuff. And then videos, they, they're pretty huge. They're big files. You know, storing big files and then delivering big files it puts a lot of load on the infrastructure. You need all this disk space. Maybe you only have so much bandwidth that your hosting provider has. So you'll blow through your gigabyte per month in, you know, two views. So you got to take all these things and pull out more into consideration when you're going to put a video on your website. So there's kind of two different camps for putting a video on your site. You can do it yourself. Or you can put it up on YouTube or Vimeo or some other external video hosting platform. Um, so you might have like an Optober or something. You might be able to use that. You got that on campus here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, where I used to work on campus, we had a thing called Camtasia Relay. And still do. You still, you still do. <laughs> All right. And that, I would put, put videos up on the video server and then we hosted there. So this is kind of where this, my investigation brought me to find this video in bed field in the first place. But you got pros and cons between doing it yourself or letting YouTube or Vimeo do it. If you do it yourself, you've just got absolute control. So if you really need like absolute control over, say, you're running a video subscription site or maybe you're selling a subscription service to learn how to do Drupal, such like build a module or something like that, then it's probably better to do it yourself since most of these hosted things are like open to the public by kind of default. But yeah, you can probably, you can do like little protected stuff, but it makes it really hard to selectively give people access in a secure fashion. Um, but again, the hard part is maintaining the player, the storage, delivery, encoding, bandwidth, all that stuff. Whereas with YouTube, you got these Google engineers that know what they're doing. 
to do all that stuff for you. Uh, but of course, you lose a little bit of control. You add a third party dependency. We don't know what happens if they kill the YouTube service, but I think we're pretty pretty confident YouTube's going to stick around. Um, I know Vimeo has a subscription service where you can, for a monthly fee, you can have so much video, and it it's really nice. The, the few departments on Iowa State use that service, and it's it's really good for uh, getting good and high quality video and no ads and all that fun stuff. There's also this idea that you can boost your search results. So if you post your videos to YouTube and in the description you link to your website, hey, that's another route for people to find your website. If they're like searching YouTube for, you know, computer science or something and they find a video from Iowa State, oh, that's great. I mean, you've got a video on YouTube and they can learn about you through YouTube and not actually visit your site, but if they're interested, they'll find that place and that also the Googles kind of see that as another link to your site. So that's that's helpful for that. So there's also a couple ways that you can get video into Google. And I think a lot of people really just want to be able to just put the videos somewhere in the body. Like, here's a paragraph about stuff, and then watch this video about so-and-so in the left. And that, that's pretty good. Um, the user can place it anywhere. They have total control over you know, how it displays in the body or the content. But in order to do that, you might have to expose the iframe element to people, which could be dangerous depending whether or not you trust your users or not. Um, and another bad or negative thing about this is you can't really extract that out and put it in a nice formatted view. So if you have like a listing of videos, you can't just say, oh, here's all the thumbnails and here's the description. It, the actual video is part of this huge body field. It's one one column in the Excel table. You can't just grep it out very easily. <clears throat> the other way is to use a field uh, on your content type. Uh, the nice thing about that is you can enforce consistency on how that video looks and feels across different pages of that node type and different displays of that node. So if you see it in a view or in a teaser or whatever, you can play around with that. You can enforce accessibility or considerations. So in my example, I have a separate field, another field that goes along with it for alternate URL for descriptive video and for transcript and for you know something that includes closed captioning. Uh, using the field should keep the dangerous elements out of the, the body area. And as I said, you can easily get it into views and teasers and whatnot. But it's difficult to get it in the right, in whatever perfect spot in your body that you want it to go. If you don't want it to be always in the top right before the body content or after the body content. So these are two different considerations and what you have to figure out how you want your video on your site. So yeah, a note about accessibility. Um, provide a transcript. Uh, usually that works if it's just like a lecture and somebody's just talking. You don't really need a descriptive like, he's wearing a blue tie and has slacks on. Uh, yeah, no, just provide the transcript because that's what they're there to learn is the content of the video. But if it's like a how-to video, like, all right, insert sprocket A into peg C, and, well, wait, I don't, they're just like doing it on the screen, like having a descriptive video that transcribes that and says, he is putting this here and that there, 
is what you're going to need in order to accommodate some of the accessibility considerations. Um, W3, uh, World Wide Web Consortium, is that right? Um, they have some notes about what they do for um, accessibility requirements. Um, I'm going to post these slides up on the note. Yeah. Yeah, I got a few URLs in here, and some of them get big, but okay. just having them there so that you have a reference is good. Um, but they have lots of information about like what types of videos, what you can do in order to accommodate accessibility requirements on videos. <clears throat> I'll wait for people to finish writing. So some solutions you have in Drupal that you may find when you're saying, I want video. Um, the media module is really popular. Um, if you have questions about the media module, talk to this guy named Dave Reed. He's here at the camp. And he, he's, he's pretty good. He's an easy going guy. And he'll probably listen to your concerns or point you in the right direction if you have questions about media. Um, but the media module. Uh, has extensions for stuff like Oinbed and YouTube and Vimeo and images and all sorts of stuff. It's a huge media organization system that allows you to share content between nodes. Um, I don't really use it because I don't know why. It seems like a big thing, but a lot of people use it and it's really it just depends on your personal style. So if you already have media module on your Drupal site, maybe you want to take a look at the path with like the uh, uh, media YouTube module. We'll get that video in there for you. Another module you might find is this video module, which it's really generic. It just says it's a video, right? I should do everything. And yeah, but it's it, it's more of like a front end for being able to put up your raw media files, and it has API calls into uh, programs like FFmpeg or um, what's the other? There's some online video encoding service. It's, I'm marrying, so I don't have my presenter notes. So. <laughs> But that, that can get a little complicated trying to get that all set up. That's going down the route of doing things yourself. Um, and then what I found is video embed field. And that's what I'm going to kind of cover here today. So, yay, it's demo time. Get to see me do stuff. Let me get my notes up here. All right. Ooh. I'm going to move it this way so you guys can see that. All right, we can see this? All right, OK. And that's my terminal if I need to use that. All right, so I've got a basic Drupal installation, bare bones. Um, I added the uh, admin menu toolbar because I just can't live without it. <clears throat> uh, all right, so let's go ahead and install this video embed field module. So Drupal, can you guys read? Uh -huh. Maybe I should change the resolution here. Just a second. Wow. All right. Drupal.org slash project slash video embed field. So here you can see kind of 
a, a quick write up of what the module is. Um, but what we're interested in is just downloading this thing. Um, does everyone know how to download and enable a module? We're, we're, we're good with that. So I can take the shortcut of doing Drush. All right. So Drush is a neat, a neat thing, and if you, I'm sure people have done Drush in their presentations here, or you might see it tomorrow. Uh, but Drush is a really nice command line interface for Drupal. So Drush is the command, and now I want to download this module called Video Embed Field. I'll do that from the root of my Drupal directory. And it's going to go out to the internet, find the module, and download the latest one and put it in my sites all modules folder for me. Awesome. Now I can do drush en for enable. That will enable and install the module for you. So no looking through that huge module page for your module and to click the checkbox. OK, so it looks like here it's asking me, oh, hey, video embed field needs the C tools module. And if you have views, you probably already have C tools. It's on like 99% of the Drupal sites out there. So um, what Drush does when you try to enable a module, it's, it's going to try and solve the dependency for you and ask you, do you want to turn on the dependencies too? You can say yes. It goes out and downloads C tools puts it in the right place, enables it, and then enables the module you were trying to enable in the first place. It saves a lot of time. And so do you want to enable all these modules that it requires? So it needs file field, image field, C tools. It's going to enable those for us. Ah, there's my notes. So we're going to go with the uh, the uh, the field way of doing stuff instead of embedding it in the body. So I'm going to create a video content type on this site. So structure, content type, add content type. And then here we'll give it a name. This is a type of video. And we're going to call it videos for description. I'm going to leave everything there and say save and add fields. So now you got this content type called video, but you only got a title and body, so it kind of looks like page. So what we want to do is add that video field. So let's so call it video. And then with this video embed field module, you get this video embed field type. So we'll select that. And it makes it, it's just about, it's a lot like adding an image field, except this one is video, which is great. Widget, it's only got its own widget called video, so we don't have to worry about that. Click save. It has no global setting, so save again. And now you can say, all right, help text is the little helpful text below the field that says, you know, tells the user what to do here. So in this case, we want to tell them to paste in the URL of a YouTube or Vimeo video. And since this is a video content type, it wouldn't make sense to have video nodes that don't have a video. So I'm going to make this a required field. You can give it a default value, just like any other thing. Um, so I don't think it's very useful here, because then you'd have a million video nodes that are the same video, which isn't helpful. And then down here, 
you can select which video providers you want to support in this field. Uh, by default, out of the box, it comes with YouTube and Vimeo. And say if you're controlling your videos and you only want to get the stuff from Vimeo, you can uncheck YouTube so that they can't post YouTube videos. They can only post Vimeo videos. And it kind of keeps you a little bit closer to what you're trying to do. Um, but here, I'll just enable both. Um, the module is extendable, so if you want a different video provider, uh, such as for Camtasia Relay or for Panopto, you can easily write a module if you know how to write modules or get your developer to do it. <laughs> um, you can write a module to support another video provider. So I did one for our Camtasia Relay thing, and then there would be a third line here that says, you know, Iowa State Camtasia Relay. Um, you can put more than one video in a field. It would just stack them together so you have like five videos on one node. Um, I usually leave that at one. We'll hit save. And so, all right, let me copy that URL here. Uh, too much copy link. Yeah. So let's see what that looks like when we want to add that video. So we'll go to content, add content, video. So we give it a title. And we give it a description if you want. Now here's our video field. Paste in the URL. All right. So that's the YouTube URL that I want to embed in the video. If it has extra parameters and stuff, it's smart enough to figure out what video you're on. So it's, it's actually pretty smart, which is awesome. And we'll hit save. Let's see what happens. <laughs> hey, here's our video. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it can be any video you want, <laughs> but there we go. We've got a video in our Drupal site now, and it kind of works. More notes. I should have printed this. All right. So hopefully, did I add that to the front page? We'll see. All right. So notice, by default, Drupal has everything promoted to front page. And if you have like a view or something that shows the teasers, you see that, well, here's our client meeting thing, but where's the video? I, I put that in there. What's going on? Um, we're going to have to change the teaser display. Um, so Drupal has different types of display for content. So by default, you get teaser and node display. And the node is the page. And teaser is like when it's listed somewhere else on the site. So let's go and take a look at that. So structure, content types, video. And we want to manage the display. And so here we want to manage the teaser display. And then here we see this video field is hidden. So what we want to do is we want to get that in there so we can see kind of what the video is. The label is the field label. So in this case, we called it video. And so you'll have like a video colon and then the video. Um, I think seeing an embedded video kind of tells you that it's a video, so you don't need that label. So let's hide that. The format, then, you can choose video player, which is the default embedded video. Uh, but they also give you the option of just putting in the URL to the video if you don't want to display the video. 
or it actually goes out and grabs a thumbnail of the designated thumbnail of that video that you can use as for your teaser. So let's add a, a thumbnail preview. Um, and so this format has different options that you can set as denoted by this gear. When you click on the gear, you can choose an image style, which is a whole other part of Drupal. Um, but it comes in handy to be able to set standard sizes of images that you want to use. So for a teaser view, I want just, mm, let's go with a 100 by 100 pixel thumbnail. And then that thumbnail, I want, when you click on it, do I want it to not be clickable? Do I want it to go to that page that has the video embedded in it? Or do I want it to go out to YouTube and to that video? I think we want to go to our, keep people on our site, but take them to the video on our site. So we want to choose content. Hit update here. And save. And let's see how that looks. Yay! There's the video. Or the thumbnail of the video. And then you, when you click on it, you get the whole thing. Great. On a different page? How did you go to the part of so this is the home page, oh. which has a view. It's called the River of News that has all content by default that's you know lists it all with teaser displays. So if we had more content, there'd be another one down here and displaying something else. Um, and then they all link the title links to the node, and we just configured the image here to link to the node. So that goes to the page where you can watch the video and read the full description. Um, you can add more meta content to it, which is cool. All right. OK. So now we want to add this transcript field. So. I don't know how to transcribe this video. How do you spell blah, 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 blah? Just do your best. OK. Like I, like cow. I know one time I was listening to something on Pandora, and it was like some techno music on womp, 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 womp. And, and I, I, I saw it said lyrics, and I looked at that. And it's WB, 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 WB. <laughs> like, was somebody actually singing that? <laughs> so we want to add that field for, you know, the transcript so that <clears throat> enough people can read what's going on in the video. So we can do that by just adding another field. Content types, video, manage fields. We'll add transcript or alternate. So if you need to provide a descriptive URL to a different video that describes what's going on, you can do that there. And I'm just going to call that a text field. Oops. No, I don't want a text field. Yeah. Manage fields. Delete that field. <coughs> So there's a difference between, let's call this transcript. There's a difference between text and long text. And if you're new, this is really hard to remember. But long text is you know, a large body of text, which could be like paragraphs and whatever. Uh, WYSIWYG fields usually use this form uh, field type, um, whereas text is more like something like your name or you know, an address or something really short that's a really small piece of uh, text. Um, so we want to use long text. And we'll save that. And if you really want to make sure your users put in something in the transcript, make it required. Um, 
Unfortunately, you can't enforce them to do it right, so they're just going to put like a dot or something in there. So this is going to be like user training. Hey, you need to transcribe it if you want to be in compliance with ADA stuff. And so I'll just say video trans script and or URL to So now we have that field there that's required. And then we'll go back to edit our video. There's our new transcript field. It's required. And blah. And now we have this field that says transcript, blah, 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 blah. Um, there is a way in CSS if you don't want to expose this to cited users because, well, sometimes cited users want to see it, but it depends on the scenario, whether or not you want cited users to have this huge transcript right in their page when they don't necessarily need it, but you need it on the page so that screen readers will see it. Um, I have a link in the resources part of my slides that uh, talks about how to move that off the screen so that screen readers can still read it, but sighted users don't have to see it. All right, so that that's pretty much covers how to add a field version. Um, video embed field also allows you to embed it within the body content. So it does a few little things here. So I'm going to grab this other video here, copy link. And I want to add a generic page. Awesome. S O M E. Is that how you spell awesomeness? It is. Okay. <laughs> All right. So by default, and depending on how you have WYSIWYG set up, you're going to just get the URL. And, well, okay, that kind of works because you can go there and see the video, but you really don't want people to leave the site. So, Drupal has this idea called text filters or input filters. So under configuration, content authoring, and text formats. Um, by default, well, okay, I did a minimal install, so you probably see plain text, plain HTML, full HTML, and if you have a really awesome site, you'll have like a WYSIWYG one. So whichever format that you want to use for your page content type or whatever, you're going to want to configure. So I'm going to configure the plain text content type since that's what we're using. And what happens is when it pulls the, the body field or whatever field that uses this filter or text format, it is going to put that content through a filter that changes the content. Um, so some of the ones that come with is limit allowed HTML tags. Uh, this is how administrators can limit the, what tags you can have. So if you say, I want to allow them to use A tags for links or image tags for images, but I don't want to give them iframe or uh, script or style tags, that, that's kind of the, the checkbox that they would use. Uh, there's also third-party contributed modules like uh, the WYSIWYG filter uh, 
module that, that it's a big one. And it works in concert with CK Editor or FCK Editor or whatever WYSIWYG thing you have installed to get it so that certain things work and other things don't. So here this filter takes HTML and changes it into plain text. So if you put in a bracket, something bracket, it changes those brackets into the HTML entities for the bracket. So it's like ampersand LT semicolon. If you've ever seen that around it. Or ampersand AMP semicolon. It's, it's the one for ampersand. Um, <clears throat> so that, you know, if you try to type an HTML into the body field, it, it shows the HTML instead of renders the HTML. This other one converts URLs into links. So that's what happened here when you saw that it became blue and underlined and you can click on it. Even though I just put the link there, I didn't write the HTML. Um, convert line breaks changes break tags and p tags. Or converts you know a single carriage return into a break and two carriage returns into a p tag. Um, otherwise, if you render it straight HTML, it doesn't worry about line breaks and stuff. It won't render that. So you got to do the converting. And then video embed field actually gave us this video embedding filter. So we'll turn that on. And what that does is if you put it, if you type in a string like this, it's going to replace that with the embed code for you. So you don't have to worry about pasting in the, the weird embed code and going to find that. You just paste in the URL there with this video colon colon in, in those brackets. And it's going to replace that with the actual video, which is kind of cool. One thing to note about text filters is that it goes in order. So here, as you see, it says video embed is going to replace the string with the iframe or whatever code you need in order to embed that video. And it's going to put that in the body. And then the next one is going to be display any HTML as plain text. So it's going to come along and see bracket, iframe, whatever. And it's going to change that bracket into ampersand, LT, semicolon. And then your embed doesn't work. So, mm, OK, we don't want that because we want it to actually be a bracket. So let's move that after the HTML filter. So now that the less than or greater than signs are not there for the HTML plain text thing to find. So then now this is in a tag, and it's going to work. Convert URLs is going to go through. It's already in a tag, so it's going to skip over that. And then line breaks doesn't really matter. So let's save that. All right, now when we go back to video, so here's what we mean by the teaser views and the other. Um, so let's take a look at this awesomeness. Reload that. What's going on? Oh, I'm not using the, the nice format that it suggested. So bracket video colon colon. And close the bracket there. Save it. And there we go. We got our video. All right. Have you guys seen the Lego movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that song gets stuck in your head after you see that. It's crazy. Awesome. All right, so now we got that in the middle of our body field, which is great. So we can have the best of both worlds. We can do whatever we want, and we can have it in a structured way that views can do stuff for us.
All right, that's the basic uh, stuff for video and bed field. Um, it does actually have a few more features, which I didn't put in my outline, but it looks like I have time to cover. Um, as you can see, this is kind of huge. Mm -hmm. um, so what you can do is under configuration, media, video embed styles. So if you're familiar with the way Drupal handles image styles, this, this works exactly, the, you know, pretty much exactly the same way, except for videos. So here, by default, you get a normal and a teaser style of video. So by default, things come in normal. So let's edit that style. And here you can see you can set the player width and the height in both YouTube and Vimeo. What other options are available for those players? Uh, you can choose different themes if it supports that. It can autoplay. I highly recommend not checking that because people hate when they go to a page. It's like you go to like I go to my newspaper's website and start reading an article and all of a sudden, hey, come to Jack's whatever car dealership. I'm like, no, I was reading. You distracted me. So it's there if you really need it, but uh, video quality, all sorts of things that may be dependent on the video provider. And that's something you can extend to um, if you're making your own video provider and set these options. So 320 by 240. Let's make it small. Let's save. And then we go to look at that awesome thing. It's a little bit smaller. It actually fits on the screen. Because before it was off the screen, right? Mm -hmm. okay. And if you wanted to, in this uh, markup here, you can do another, it's a double colon, put in a different um, video embed style, embed style that you had um, configured and it'll make it even smaller. So it's a, a teaser style that makes things a little bit smaller. Um, uh, I like having screen real estate to have All right, um, so like I said, you can extend this module to support other media providers. Um, so I'm going to show, oops, copy link, our uh, Camtasia Relay implementation. So I'm going to say add a video. Video URL. I'm going to paste in this huge URL that came from our system. And I'm going to cheat. I'm sorry. So, oops, you know, it's not YouTube or Vimeo, so it, it can't validate that. So let's go get my module. Um, it's not it's not on Drupal.org, so Drush is not going to help us there. So I'm going to do some git voodoo here and get the module installed in my site. So it's going to sites all modules. And I'm going to do a git clone from my GitHub repository where the module is. So it pulls it down. All right. So now there's Brenton video there. And all right, it's there. But now I can use Drush to enable it. This time I'm going to give it the dash Y flag to make it automatically say yes to any of the prompts. 
So it's not going to ask you, do you really want to go to get the dependencies? Do you really want to enable these modules? If you do it the dash Y, it just assumes yes for everything. All right, so it is enabled. Now, if I try to submit it again, oh, wait, no. We've got to edit this content type again. So content types, video, manage, manage fields. And we've got our video field. We'll edit that. And remember we only had YouTube and Vimeo in there. Now this module adds front and center video. So check that box. Now it supports all of those video providers. Um, I was adding one. Okay, add a video. Now we have our nice little embedded video. So we got our own video provider. Um, is anyone interested in looking at that code, or is it? Um, it's actually out on GitHub. Yep. So. So, yeah, the, mo the module is specific to our installation of Camtasia Relay, so it, it has the that URL part to validate it is Iowa State. Mm -hmm. So unless you want to only embed videos from Iowa State, no. <laughs> it's not so no. useful. But you can use it as an example of how, how it's implemented. Yeah, because I know that they've done some videos with Camtasia, but we've always went with the YouTube. Yeah, and <clears throat> this is not specifically Camtasia videos, really. It's it just it's, the URL. yeah, it's a particular format that we use Camtasia to export as. So it's um, not just like the HTML video format so um, but it's it's worth looking at and if if your developers know how relay is working mm -hmm. then you can certainly adapt it to your needs so yeah I'll put that in the in the slide notes then yeah all right Do you have anything else in my presentation all right So I did mention a few resources. Um, there's a web aim is a really good resource for working with uh, uh, accessibility on the web. They they've got all sorts of resources that it, it's if you're doing anything in that it's worth checking out. Um, but they do have a nice primer on how to hide content for sighted users, but that needs to be there for uh, for the blind users. Um, and then uh, one thing I didn't show you is this uh, responsive iframe thing. It's a little uh, CSS that allows you to make things like YouTube embeds or Vimeo embeds responsive. So like you've heard of responsive images where you can like slide the, the, the size of the window smaller and it shrinks down this should be able to do that for your embedded videos, which is really nice. And these links will be up on the on the website in a few minutes after the presentation here. Um, that for GitHub, right? Yeah. I think if you search Renton video on GitHub. And I'm I'm pretty sure I've emailed that to you. Yeah, that was okay. The more additional email trails find it. Yep, 
Is there any other questions or uh, comments or observations or pain points that you've experienced with video? I think I did pretty good stretching out 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe you learned a little. Yes. Off subject brush. Uh huh. Mac works quite well. Mm hmm. Other flavors of Linux on the computer. You heard anything about having issues with some Linux and things? You know, yeah. I've had difficulty trying to put it on. Yeah, it paper. depends on how you installed it. Um, really, Drush tends to work better on Linux. Actually, yeah, it, it's just whatever bash. Um, it really depends on how you install it, um, depending on where you got your installation instructions. Um, on my Mac, I'm using something called Mac Ports, and I can just say port install drush, and I've got it, and I don't have to worry about it. Um, on Linux, uh, I think they have like an Ubuntu repository or something, so you can subscribe to that and get app get Drush. Um, installing Drush is kind of a big, is uh, probably another full presentation. <laughs> but yeah, I, I know a lot of installation instructions say, you know, go download it and then symlink it here so that it, you know, you can find it when you type Drush. If if you have it, I, I would, I'd be happy to look at it afterwards. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot. Of, I mean, depending on how exactly you're installing it. Yeah. Um, but I can see how that could be a mistake that a lot of people have had. All right.